Hey, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the start of a new week. It's Monday, May 6th. Price of BTC currently at 5635 What was hoping to be a nice inverse head and shoulders, kind of like this, like that, this right shoulder did not form. And this is why I stated that, guys, you have to wait for confirmation, okay? Um, this is a perfect reason why you understand why a broken uh, right shoulder could essentially destroy your position, right? So never anticipate patterns playing out. Wait for patterns to play out by the breakout, okay? So in this case, you know, the right shoulder did not pan out and worse, uh, we actually had lower highs, kind of like this, and it looks like we're creating another maybe lower high. And remember, uh, I, I've stated that, you know, once you have some lower highs with lower lows like these, okay, um, you know that at least on this time frame that we're looking at this asset at uh, on the one hour, it has turned bearish, okay? It got rejected by this trend line right there, right there, and right there, and it created those lower highs and lower lows that I just showed you. So ultimately, we need to wait for the higher time frames to see if uh, they're going to step up um, and the bulls are going to you know redeem themselves by pushing the prices up so for the most part what we're looking at is you know say the four hour right the four hour gets really interesting because in my opinion the four hour is still really strong um, especially from you know this big move down here in february We've had consistent higher lows and higher highs driving price up, but then um, over here in April, we had a sharp rejection right around this, you know, let's just say $5,500 area. That's this red line right here, okay? And so we got rejected sharply, moved down, caught some more bull support, moved up, um, you know, had a bit of a fake, uh, fake out right here, and then came down again got rejected on that same level, and then boom, moved down sharply again, okay? And then this, we spent the past few days here, uh, last week, and then we kept that moving up, and then we sharply moved back up. As you can see, this candle right here, these couple of candles, tested this area, flipped it as support. Now, what we're coming at is a very unique spot where we're either going to create some higher lows Oops, I got the wrong one. Let me delete that. We're either going to create some higher lows or we're going to come and test down, uh, test the support maybe one more time, maybe move sideways or maybe go a little bit deeper, okay? I would probably expect that um, prices are not going to go too much deeper. Um, if they do, I mean, they, they'll probably have to come back somewhere in this level, like 53, 5400. Um, but if, if prices go deeper, right, than this area right here, uh, that would imply that some of the bulls that were lost and or that were pushing the prices up in this run are essentially going to be stopped out or lost because I'm certain that they also see what I'm seeing, which is that this resistance right here is now flipped to support. Breaking that would imply breaking structure, at least on a four hour time frame, And then we might move up a little bit higher um, later on. But at, at least on the four hour chart, breaking structure like that is not going to be pretty, okay? But we don't need to worry about that just yet. Um, we do see a bullish engulfing candle right here on the four hour. We still have about 22 minutes left. Uh, and so if this is possible on the four hour, we may have another uh, decent move on the way up. Just We just gotta make sure that we're not gonna create another lower high on the four hour time frame. Let's see how the daily is looking. Uh, two you know, bearish candles, which is of no surprise, obviously guys, because we've had you know, one, two, three, four, five green days uh, that drove prices from almost 51.25 all the way to a high of 58.40. So almost a $700 move, you know. Um, so a decent pullback is necessary. At the very least, test this 
5,500 level again, um, maybe on the daily. Or what we may need to do is actually pull prices down to this um, trend line that we've had uh, that was held from once, you know, and multiple times right here, two or three times. So if that's the case, then prices may come down to these levels right here, which was 5,300 or worst case, you know, 5,200 or so, okay? If prices come down sharply over the next day or two, all right? Just something to keep an eye on. Now, another thing is that the 21-day EMA was something that was supporting price through this cycle right here. And all through this cycle right here, once price broke up above the uh, February low right here of the wave two, right? So price have found support right here once, you know, multiple times right here, uh, multiple times, multiple times. And then we didn't, we kind of moved away from the 21 EMA. And now it found support last week, right around that same area. And so if price does come down to meet the 21 EMA, it'll probably be somewhere in this region right here, 5,400 or so, like I stated. So it could be around, you know, um, just a bit lower than the support where some of these wicks are going to kind of hit this 21 EMA, or it could hit, you know, this area right here too, if prices fall sharply. Okay. So just a couple of levels to keep an eye on. All right. And for the most part, um, you know, if, if I do consider doubling down on these positions, uh, it'll probably have to be, um, It'll probably have to be because uh, I see BTC having another leg up, which again, I think I still see it happening. Um, I want to uh, sort of have some exposure to LTC and Ethereum and BCH, uh, especially because they move at a higher percent than BTC, right? So in this case, um, LTC, I would like to get back into um, maybe somewhere on the bottom of this channel again, once prices hit this area, more than likely they probably will uh, with the way BTC is moving right now. I just wouldn't want to have LTC move, um, you know, even deeper than this channel because breaking this channel could mean prices could accelerate down fast to the bottom side of the channel, which, you know, it hasn't really been touched since the beginning of February. Okay, so that could be a little scary. Ether, sort of the same thing, I would say. Uh, you can see Ether is actually hanging on tightly on support of that 21-day EMA right now, um, which also happens to be right near the top of that triangle right there, this ascend ascending triangle. Okay, um, Prices still haven't really breached past 167, which is a big resistance level. You can see wicks poking up past that, but nothing, you know, special sorts. Uh, but Ethereum is clearly hugging this 21 day EMA and it likes it just like BTC. So do keep an eye on that. BCH, um, BCH is looking decent too. Um, I don't know if BCH really likes the 21 day EMA, but clearly bounced off of it decently uh, over the past couple of hours. Um, I would say BCH probably still has that move in it where it could keep on moving up towards, you know, high 290s, maybe low 300s or the teens. So, all right, that, our favorite bat is uh, finally seeing some, um, some tough, you know, selling pressure from the bears, uh, which kind of makes sense, you know, obviously guys, because it went from way down here, okay, guys, uh, from 10 cents all the way to um, all the way to 50 cents almost, okay, and now it's coming down. It's down all the way to about 33, 8, 34. So this is why, again, this is why we waited. For, we were waiting for confirmation in this area and to break above trend line to you know accelerate away from this bottom trend line but it didn't happen so this is why you don't get into a trade preemptively okay um, so this is a perfect example of why you should wait for confirmation 
And you could clearly see that uh, bat is suffering right now. Uh, and it may go down potentially all the way to say 32 or 31 or so. I uh, don't quite know. I'll have to look at it a little bit deeper um, later, but I'll keep you guys updated. But for the most part, um, I would probably stay away from most alts uh, right now. Because like I stated, um, you know, this trend line is hanging on by a thread. This is the crypto total market cap, excluding BTC. And it's hanging on by a thread. And if it sort of breaks and say BTC goes down, uh, this could bring this market cap, you know, down here. Okay, um, so around 65, 63 billion, okay, which would be, you know, a good $10 billion loss, uh, which would strip off a good amount of percent, maybe 10, 20% from some of the, uh, the more well-known alts. So do be careful, all right? And I'll check on TRX to see if it's given us any signals. Uh, not really. Hasn't even bounced off that trend line. It looks like the last two days it did found a bit of a bottom. But again, you want to see some higher lows and higher highs. And first, TRX needs to break 460. Um, and then at, I probably wouldn't even want to touch it until it breaks this area right here. Right around like 630 or so. Um, and as you can see, it's not even close. CXRP, yep, same thing, XRP first would need to close above uh, 5,400 successfully um, and then 6,000 and then I might consider it. But for the most part, um, not even worth looking into right now. Just let them keep falling. Let's see how ADA is doing. ADA has pretty much broken our trend line, um, so that's of no use now. Um, it could actually bounce on the 786 fib or yeah because I mean technically it, 786 also m lines up with uh, this support right here that was created this support and also this area right here so that could be kind of an interesting area to, to get into and the RVN is doing I know everyone keeps talking about RVN nothing special about RVN guys uh, almost a devastating blow on RVN just like most alts though, you know, so I'm really not concerned about RVN. Let's see how RDN is doing. Uh, that's a bad chart. So if you were part of the Advantage program, we actually rode the um, RDN train with this big wick, sold off here. Um, I think we bought in around 5,300. So from here to here was like a good 15, 16% move. And then we pretty much let it go. As you can see, it's not doing anything. It's just creating lower highs. Uh, this is pretty much the, um, the the pattern of a majority of alts. You know, lower highs. Um, all alts pretty much hitting all-time low support levels, like this one right here. You know, hit. It's pretty much hitting all-time lower. It's about to in the next couple of days. Um, so you know, this is probably. One of the weird reckonings of the space that you're going to see and um, I think it's necessary you know I think if Bitcoin truly wants to move above um, you know six thousand seven thousand these previous resistance levels that needs to successfully get over it needs to accumulate as much of the market cap as possible and that's not gonna be possible if every you know couple of days people start jumping into alts because of their greed right so just something to keep in mind. Uh, let's take a look at the BLX chart. Um, I went over this, I think in the YouTube video, you could see on the BLX chart, a um, couple things that are happening that are interesting is, you know, the ascending trend line that's been held for like 10 years, right? It's been held multiple times, once, twice, three, four, five, six, you know, seven right there on the wick. Um, so you could see that now, you know, we're coming to that same level, okay? And if this becomes resistance, what we could do is we could pull back like this one did right here for a couple of months um, and then sort of come back, you know, to try to break through that trend line again, okay? But the fact that we broke under that trend line could imply that, you know, we could face that same area as resistance 
and then break down a little bit further not necessarily having to go all the way down to a thousand or anything like that I just mean that it may need to pull back a little bit more which makes sense right because I stated that if we start looking at the um, the NVT uh, ratio right here the NVT signal I uh, said this you know in multiple videos you could see that the NVT signal which is a measure of the on-chain activity on the Bitcoin blockchain uh, divided by I think the market cap you can see that the price in this case is you know heavily overvalued back here in 2017 and once NVT signal gave you that overvaluation price got tumbled down hard same thing right here in July same thing multiple months here in November and now we're kind of seeing that again in April so you know obviously this is a pretty reliable signal in my opinion and so I think at some point we do need to sort of have a deeper pullback and then potentially rise back up but for now um, you know prices do look uh, really interesting because they're in a spot where they're just shy away from resistance levels uh, like the 6,000 level because prices are currently at 5,600 or so um, but beyond that we also have you know a support that's about 4,000 4,200 so it's a pretty deep drop I want to look at this uh, IT ratio right here on MET signal and uh, you could see that you know, all through 2015 and 16, um, there's really no sort of you know, signal of a top, right, when the bull market was starting. So it doesn't provide that many false signals. But you could see right here in the 2013 top right here when we went to 30 or 1300, the NVT uh, signal again gave you the hey, this is overvalued in terms of what's happening uh, truly on the on-chain activity. So prices should be taking a dump. And as you can see, they pretty much did for many, many months. And then prices rose back up again to this level. MVT gave you a signal again, boom. Okay, we moved away from that um, and did not look back, okay? Now we got a bit of a flash on the green right here where you know prices stated that, hey, we're bottoming out right now um, you know this might be an opportunity to buy you could see we got the signal again in 2016 where prices were at 400 bucks close to um, so these green signals are you know prices are undervalued as compared to what's happening on the on-chain activity okay um, this happened once here in February so if you were if you would have taken the trade here in February and you would have sold off in uh, July um, when it got overvalued you still make you know from the bottom right here was 5800 to the top right here was 8500 okay obviously you would have missed this 11.7 top because in this case NVT signal was not telling you that 11.7 is an overvaluation of a price compared to the NVT signal but 8500 was because it the price was you know value wise it was too high compared to what was happening on the network okay now same thing might be happening here where there's a lot of you know uh, false signaling people think that there's actually more happening on the bitcoin network than actually is and so this gives you a good idea of okay well it looks like we're you know pretty much overvalued in terms of price uh, compared to what's happening on the bitcoin network okay just something to keep an eye on guys really good indicator um, this head and shoulders is pretty much invalidated um, price has successfully broken this order block right here uh, now we're just probably just going to retest this area of support like i stated earlier maybe even come down to test this 53 5400 uh, support which would be the top of this uh, ascending triangle that we had and that's that's it guys sorry for the long video but i hope you enjoy it and take care. Cheers. Talk to you all soon.